It is two days after the biggest drift event we've ever been at in Poland and we are straight on a plane again. We have just landed in Toronto for the next step of the LZ World Tour. This is gonna be a big one, I think one of the biggest events that Canada has ever seen. We are on the road, we got our big Ford Expedition. Before we get to the venue, we've got somewhere very cool that we wanna check out on the way. A little bit of a bonus episode for you guys. There's a guy that builds some pretty mad stuff around here. We're gonna go check out his shop. Wow. This is need a C license in Ireland to drive. Yeah. Oh, it opens as well. It's practically a convertible. All right guys, we are just outside Toronto and I want to stop in to, you know we love a good garage tour, we love a good shed tour. Well this one's a little bit different because we're at TSH Auto who sent us a message. We have looked at their cars before, but we really wanted to show you guys because they're doing stuff very different here. So we had to come here because you guys are building stuff that, I don't know, it's like you haven't seen anything else that's easy before and you just decided to build the difficult stuff, right? Yeah. Different. Yeah. Well, because we, we're you new to drifting life, so and we want to make something build like something different. Yeah. Well, they have done just that. There's a couple of cars I want to show you, but the first one we can't ignore is the world's first drift Porsche SUV. Cayenne. SUV. I, it's first drift SUV, probably, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, why a Porsche Cayenne? Well, uh, it was a long dream of mine to do stance car like this because nobody not much people doing even suv because i started my life from car audio and stance cars and my friend bring me over to the drifting and while i was building i changed my mind from like being building vip slam car to drifting suv why not why not we, we learned a word called escalation it starts as a small idea and then you've got a bright glitter purple Porsche Cayenne drift car. So this is on coilover lowered. Yeah, it's like nine inches drop. It's pretty low. <laughs> and it's a proper drift car. Like, yeah, it's proper. So done, let me know the specs. So let's have a look at the engine first because I assume not the standard, it could be the standard. Oh, no. yeah. That's the reason because they very cheap without the engine. That's cheap without the engine, Josh. They are cheap without the engine, to be fair. They, oh, okay. <laughs> In very American. Fashion, so right? It took a German SUV, <laughs> put an American V8 in it. This is an LS. LS2. Two supercharged. Supercharged aluminum. And what sort of power does it make? It's 538 wheels. 538 wheels. So that, that's over 600 horsepower on the way we, we uh, do flywheel horsepower in Europe. So 600 horsepower in a Porsche Cayenne. And I assume it has a very fancy angle kit on this because you got an FDF hat on. Yeah. We yeah. obviously run all our stuff on FDF. So you, they made you an angle kit for this? Yeah, one of the kind. So you it doesn't surprise me that much that it's one of a kind. They're gonna, they're gonna fly off the shelves. <laughs> Josiah, they're gonna fly. So, but inside it's pretty nice. Yeah, it has a Bentley seat. It has Bentley seats, actually. <laughs> it's got rear seats, it's got... A Subwoofers in the center console. And look at the, any drift cars have this on the door, right? Well, because my background is coming from like car audio, so I have to... It's a party machine, that's what I call it, right? Yeah. Party wagon. All right, there we go. Some conventional stuff, nice. So we have an S15. So these aren't so common here, right? The S15s? Uh, There's not so many? Canada no, like has a rule different than the United States. So 15 years old cars you can import. And it's 25 in the US, nice right? Engine from the S14s per car. This is a good looking car with the hydro and everything. Aurus kit, vertex kit, no, Aurus kit. Aurus. 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 Yeah, Aurus type of nice. And then we go back to unconventional because we have another Audi, which so, is a drift car? Drift car, yeah. A drift car A5. A5, yes. So how does this work? Uh, the idea started uh, because we want to build Pro-Am car and compete in Audi. But while we started building nine months ago the Pro-Am car, we needed something to test it out, get familiar with the chassis. So we dropped the stock suspension to Josiah, he designed some 
design something quick for us. And um, this one is uh, as stock as it gets. Two liter turbo engine, stock all wheel drive transmission with welded center diff and welded diff. And it works? Works. Yeah. Because I'm just saying, you know, we're running out of drift chassis to try. You want to see the engine? It's, it sounds like a SAR almost because it's two liter turbo. It's the Audi SR. <laughs> it's pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Or like Volkswagen has the same engine, but it's not the same way. Forged piston, forged antennas in it, and uh, tune, bigger turbo. Here we what go. sort of power does it make? 300 at wheels on our Mustang Dyno, which so, is like, yeah, like 400 so, and crank. It's so a 400 horsepower out of a 2 liter TFSI. We are looking for the new SR. We are looking for the new SR and there's lots of these. There is not a lot of SRs. And they're probably both equally unreliable and need pistons anyway. Yeah. It's given us ideas before we even get to the event. But I've just realized what you said. So this is the practice car because you're building another car. Yeah. And that's inside, right? Yeah. That's the one I wanted to see. So you're not going to believe what they've done here. I thought I'd seen it all in drifting, but I have not seen it all. You guys have built a proper Audi drift car. Yeah, that's what happens when you bring this one and put some steroids in it. <laughs> this is a proper Pro-Am car. Wow. It's just, I've never thought about an Audi. I mean, we obviously, you, you're probably seeing more weird chassis we've when we are here. Classes. No, but in Driftmasters we've seen a lot of, obviously lots of BMWs, lots of Mercedes, not lots, but a few yeah. Mercedes. But I don't think there's an Audi drift car in Europe competing, as far as I know, which is strange because they're from Europe. So it took a bunch of guys in Canada to figure out how to do a drift car from Germany. Yeah. And that's drifting. That is so cool. See, I don't know why, of all the things I've looked at here, it's a billet uh, seat rail. You also have a very important component in there, which is the Link ECU Fury X, as you can see, just tucked into that. Shout out to Link ECU. Powering Audis now, Audi drift cars. Yep. I, I need to see what's going on under here. Okay, this is, is, what engine is this? <laughs> Hold on, that's a... Yes, let's guess. VR6. Yeah, VR6, yeah. Is that VR6? Yes, 3.2. VR6, forged internals. Then it can give more yeah. details on the engine. It's a 3.2 VR6 of uh, 2004 to Volkswagen Touareg. I'm just going to rewind for everybody here. So they've got an Audi A5, billet seat rails. They put a Volkswagen Touareg engine in. The issue is because the Audi is a Volkswagen Audi yeah. group, right? So we just think we cannot use any other like engine in it, LS, JZ so or whatever. Like but you haven't. We can, yeah. But, but you've, gone, if you've gone all in-house VW, basically, or VW yeah. group. So you put a big old car turbo on it. Billet intake, two screamer pipes. This is really nice. How much power does this make? It makes 630 at wheels, 800 crank on 27 PSI. 800 horsepower. Have we been missing a trick? That's the thing. We're thinking how no one has thought of this before. Could we, could we start it? a trick because it's so easy to get these chassis and engines in Europe and nobody does it. We literally only spoke about this on the podcast. We are like, what chassis do you use? And I was like, what engines do you use? And like, what even no one's built when there's a street car of a power, like ever. You know what I mean? Like, you think about Evos and all the JDM stuff, people spend a fortune. Like, you start working on these, on the bag stuff, it's so cool. I know he's warming up now because he wants to give it an absolute <laughs> ramp here. Access to everything in the back. <laughs> just to see an Audi A5 with a rear ad to me is just yeah, nuts. It's all like fiberglass doors. So it's all fiberglass body. Yeah. That is. I mean, it's. You see this it's in drifting. very tidily done. Yeah, very we see tidily. this in drifting all the time, but it's in the back of an Audi A5. Like where. You got like. Everything is just so cool on this thing. It's been a long time since I've been blown away by something this different. This is nuts. 
And then we have another car which you sent me an Instagram of. Yeah. Which is this. This is. So our conversation started. I sent the message. They want the car to drive in Canada. They asked me, do I want a car to drive while we're in Canada? It's a little bit more exciting than our rental car. Nothing wrong with our rental car. But then you sent me a picture. It didn't look like this. No, it looked yes. very different. And I was like, I don't mind. Just don't, you know, don't put any stress or any pressure in. And then you went crazy and started yeah. rapping. <laughs> and now we got the wildest looking A6. It's A4 Avant. Started A4. life as an A4 Avant with 2 liter turbo. I bought the car with blown engine and that's how we met with the guys. Okay. So they did the S4 V6 supercharged swap. So this is S4 powered? Yeah, because North America never had S4 Avants. And then did more power? Yeah, I did the dual pulley on that, so we tuned it and we got like 400 all-wheel drive horsepower at wheels. Dual clutch transmission, everything tuned. This too. thing is nuts. Whoa, we got our. Look at that. So oh, we'll make a little preparation for you. <laughs> what? I'm just looking here going, what? Oh, my God. There's a lot of speakers in here. A lot of speakers. It's got more speakers on one door than it does in my entire car. That is true. Which is, these two would probably be more than your car that worked, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> That is so cool. Got the roof box, which is very cool. So the size of the sofa here. 21 inch. <laughs> Does it, oh, it still opens? You see the aftermarket? Oh opening. my god. There's a little room for luggage there. <laughs> but it'll get, it'll get blown to pieces, I think, <laughs> by the base. Sounds good. It's on air. Right. <laughs> get the shit out of me. Sorry. That scared us all right there. You know what? I, I miss people building cars like this that are just outrageous. We all start getting into subtlety and subtle little things. Every now and again you just need something to punch in the face. This might this will do. This will do for an adventure in Canada. Okay, so the guy's gonna bring the Audi out to show us the sound and I'm gonna do a little practical joke on Dave because um well we have a. Uh, Ground noise, which is apparently a frequency that makes you sh yourself. <laughs> so we're gonna play this. We said we, it's gonna be a bassy tune for Dave, and uh, we're gonna see what happens. <laughs> Sounds nice. Sounds like a Lambo. We're getting inspiration here. I got in there. It's called the brown one. He <laughs> <laughs> tried to make me shit myself in the man's car. He gave it to me 20 seconds ago. I'm sorry, but it was just. Lucas, I'm not sure this is working out. <laughs> I get to sit as usual. Last time he wasn't too good. Hopefully he doesn't mess this one up. Nice little rental for the weekend. 400 ponies. Is that the brown sound? That's the brown note. Turn it off. Sounds unbelievable. I like it. Can we go back to Nürburgring now?
Two hour drive from Toronto. I believe we're still in Toronto. We're in Toronto Motorsport Park now. And yeah, this is where the event's gonna be this weekend. There's, I believe, a drag strip over there and the road course over there, which we're just going down to the track a day early, may do some branding, try and figure out a few things of which way the paddock and track and everything is gonna be sorted. It's always better to be ahead of it. So you're more in control. But we'll see what's what. Give you guys a little walk around. Hopefully, I think there's some road racing on now. So let's see what's going on. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit bored. So I'm gonna go just kinda walk around and see what we got here. What can we do out here? Let's see if anybody sends it. We got a Mach 1 over here. Ford. That's a dope car. Hi, how's it going? So little man? What's your name? Artie, nice to meet you, Artie. Uh, the boys right over there talking about setup, what they're gonna do, where everything's gonna be at. That guy looks like he's about to go for a ride. Let's see, maybe we go for a ride with him. All right, let's ask this guy if he gives us a ride. Hey, bro, can I come for a ride? Come on, oh, shit. Let's do this. Let me put on my seat belt. Last time, bro, I drove was with that guy over there. You see that guy in the blue shirt? Yeah. His name is Josh. Yeah. And the last time we were driving last week in Nürburgring yeah. in a JZ X110, honestly, <laughs> it was kind of scary because I had to tell him where to turn. You stayed in the car with him? Yeah, we came and the brakes were shot. <laughs> the brakes were gone, bro. So let's see. Let's see if you're any good. Oh, shit. This track, when it first came, I was like, ah, it doesn't look too good, you know? Flat, can't really even see the turns because it's such a, like, a big space. But now, after Antonio gave me a ride, I can say for grip, this is awesome. It has fast, straight, a bunch of cool, interesting turns, good braking zones, amazing. I wonder how it's gonna be for drift, but Antonio definitely drove the piss out of this Mach 1. I'm amazed. Wait, the boss is walking next door when I'm driving. <laughs> I hope he didn't see. Did he see? Uh, I don't. I don't know. <sighs> not sure. Not sure. Hope he didn't see. All right, bro. I'm gonna sneak out quietly, Antonio. Thank you, Antonio. Uh, you drove the shit out of me. <laughs> Let me sneak out. So yeah, we're just you know checking checking this car out. What up, Josh? I'm sweating, man. What you been doing, man? Just been here for two minutes. What? What happened? You happened, that's what happened. So we're here with 
Uli, Uli is hey, the owner five. of this racetrack. <laughs> and Uli, is, I was looking from a distance, like we all were, and you yeah. said, hey, why don't you take the car for a spin? And I said, what car? And he goes, an R35 GTR here. So we might go for a lap and see what your track's all about. Sounds great. Hopefully you like it. Track owners all around the world. <laughs> here is the example of how you need to be. Take notes. No one else would even hand us the key to the toilets when we go to tracks. <laughs> here we get a GTR. So we're going to go hop it in. Okay. So, Dave, are you going to go full automatic or are you going to use the... Uh... I'll do one lap in full automatic and then I'll, I'll start working my way up. Go into man mode. Man. What is this? What is this? Got a bit of an upgrade, buddy. Ah. You know what? I I got... I've got this bad. <laughs> <laughs> so you may have got, not got your Nürburgring lap, but... Do you know what? This, this, your... this, this may make up for it a little bit. Yeah, there might be actually some brakes on this thing. Do you brake? I wouldn't be a massive fan oh, steady, steady on the <laughs> of the GTR in a road car, but as a track car, man, it's really good. Good brakes, good turn in. Ooh. Is that sliding? Yep. <laughs> Fast, take this fast. Don't be a wuss. Even if there is a wall. Go, 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 go! confidence in you. Like four-wheel drive, such an amount of grip. This is a pretty fast lap, I think. I don't know any comparison to that, but I'm figuring out where the track goes. Oh, this track is amazing, and this car is really good. I can see why so many people use them for track cars. Well, I wasn't expecting you to do that today, anyways. No. GTRs are sweet. Pretty good if uh, I don't get a lap to see how this thing really performs. Yeah. Josh, Josh is really good. Uh, just, just how do you have to cool them? No, no, do you want to go in? No, first of all, I just did two flat out laps. Let's have a look at the front brakes. Here's the GTR. The JZX and I is doing it. There are no brakes. brakes. You can't brake. T brake. Nothing. Not a thing. Literally not the meaning of that. Yes, it is. Use the momentum of the car, not the brakes. Okay, momentum. Momentum. Here we go, power! <laughs> so, where's your cane here? Here we go. Tie left. Now it's going to be a hard right after this. We're into the drift layout now. Oh, healthy. I need to navigate. We're in the drift with drift layout. Hard right, hard right, hard right. Then it's going to be a long, a little, little, a little bit of a long pull for a drift car. Then a hard left. Then a sweeping right to the wall, Josh. <laughs> to the wall. To the wall. To the wall. Then goes low. Absolutely roasted the brakes there now. Huh? They're okay. Oh, hey! 